All right, welcome to example five, the Atwood's machine revisited once more with now conservation of energy. So here we're asked to calculate the speed of either M1 or M2, because they're both gonna be traveling the same speed, they're attached to the same strength after they've been released. Uh, it's a little bit trickier this example because now we are assuming that the wheel is also, that the, the pulley, sorry, is also rotating, right? So um, let's start off to kind of, before we start problem solving, let's kind of visualize this and do an LOL diagram. All right, so if we consider a system that is block M1, block M2, all right, the pulley, and of course the earth system. So all four of these things, all right? And when we look at it, looking at it, we see that M1 is heavier, right, than M2. So M1 is going to accelerate down, and M2 is going to accelerate up, right? And so we're going to have to make some assumptions here. We're going to assume that M2 starts like at a zero height here, and then M1 it starts at some like initial height of, I don't know, three meters in this case, right? So let's kind of break it down here. We, we have gravitational energy of number one mass, gravitational energy of number two mass. Then we've got, so like, let's say kinetic energy of, and I'm running out of space, so I'm just gonna go one and two together, right? And then we're gonna talk about gravitational energy of one and gravitational energy of two, and kinetic energy of one and two as well at the end, right? Like both of them combined, that's one and two, comma two. Okay, so if we look at it, um, the gravitational potential energy of number two is, is basically nothing. It starts at the lowest position, but number one starts at some potential energy, like here, let's say, okay? So we're gonna divide this up into like, I don't know, four blocks or something. And the kinetic energy of both of them, they're not moving initially, so that's zero. Okay, now M1 is gonna drop and it's gonna lose all of its potential energy. And consequently, M2 will go up. Now, remember M2 is smaller, right? So if it this one goes down by three meters, this one goes up by three meters, but it only has a mass of 10, so it's not gonna gain as much potential energy. So I'm just gonna draw an increase of potential energy of number two, right? But no, the, the gravitational energy of number one drops to zero. Okay, now I, I'm not sure how much it increases by. Maybe it's, I don't know, three blocks or something. Who, who knows, right? So let's say like that, right? And then the rest of the energy must go into uh, kinetic energy. One half mv squared of one and one half mv squared of the other. But I'm realizing I'm forgetting something, right? Because there's actually two types of kinetic energy, right? Maybe we can try to update this picture a little bit. So really, we have to consider there's also rotational energy. So this, this is kinetic energy, this K12. And this is the rotational energy of the pulley. So we also have, try to do that again here. Uh, we also have, well, I can, eh, can I pick that? Yeah, there we go. We also have some rotational energy of the pulley. So some of the rotational energy goes into there as well. So we have to add in block of energy, let's say here. Now it doesn't quite add up, it should be three, that's five. I don't know, let, let's just make this guy a bit bigger and, and just so that kind of makes sense. So I have one, two, three, four, five blocks, and then I have one, two, three, four, five blocks here. Now I don't know, of course, if the kinetic energy, if these are the right size blocks, but I know the blocks on the right and the blocks on the left add up to be equal to each other. Hopefully this is kind of giving you a sense of what's going on here. So one loses potential energy, all but big chunk of it, Part of it goes into, a lot of it actually goes into two going up. Of course, these guys now have some kinetic energy. So some of it goes into kinetic energy. And of course, it's also being used to, to give rotational energy to the pulley. So our conservation of energy statement is going to be the following. Energy initially equals energy final. We have the gravitational energy of number one initially is equal to the gravitational energy of number two finally, plus the kinetic energy of one and two together, plus the kinetic rotationally, the rotational kinetic energy of the pulley. So now we just need to put in numbers in here. We have M1G, and then whatever height this is, we'll just call it delta Y, equals M2 
2G, and it's the same delta Y. Remember, it's the same string. So if the string goes down by three meters, the other string goes up by three meters. And then I have the kinetic energy of the system, one half uh, M1 plus M2. Now I, I could go one half M1 V squared plus M2 V squared. I don't have to do that. I'm just going to write one half at combined mass times V squared, right? It's the same thing as if I wrote individual terms, plus one half uh, rotational inertia I times the angular velocity omega. Now, one thing that's going to be maybe tricky here is the right side here. We, we obviously know all these values in here. For M1, we're just solving essentially for uh, V, but we need to make some substitutions. So we need to replace I. What do we replace I with? Well, we got to make an assumption. It's a uniform disk. And if you look back to our notes, a uniform disk will have a rotational inertia of half MR squared. Okay. And that mass is, I'll just use capital M and then R squared. We also need to relate angular velocity to velocity. And, you may, and we're assuming the rope is not slipping with a pulley. So if you recall, V equals R times omega or capital R in this case, because R here, right? So we can replace the angular velocity with V over R. Okay, so putting those in, I get the following. M1 G delta Y, M2 G delta Y, plus one half M1 M2 V squared plus half, another half M, okay, M R squared times V over R quantity squared. So um, we'll see in the end that the radii of the this uh, pulley wall basically counts out, right? So you will get this expression. And I realized I really didn't need a lot of space here. I just shifted it over a little bit. And now I just need to solve this in here and substitute all the numbers in. So I'll get this whole line with all the substitutions in there. Then, you know, Bring it down, I get 147 equals 13.25. And then if I take the square root of this fraction, I get the right answer, 3.33 meters per second. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, you can probably ask some, think about conceptual questions like, well, what would happen if the pulley was not a solid cylinder, but um, it was like a, a, a hoop with all the mass on the outside? How would that change that answer if the rotational inertia of the pulley increased? What do you think would happen to the velocity? Okay, that's it for this example.